Today's lesson will be on literal and non-literal language. This time we will be studying using metaphors. So before we begin, let's activate some prior knowledge. Uh, before in class, we've discussed what a simile is. Which statement below describes a simile? Let me read the three options. When I am done, pick which you think is the correct one. Click on the slide to reveal the answer. A simile is a figure of speech that directly compares two similar things. The simile is usually in a phrase that begins with the words as or like. Or is it, a simile is a figure of speech that directly compares two different things. The simile is usually in a phrase that begins with the words as or like. A simile is a figure of speech that compares two different things. The simile can be used in any phrase of words. If you think you know the right answer, point to it on the screen. The correct one was the middle definition. The first definition was wrong because it says a simile compared similar things. They do not. A simile compares two totally different things. To make them seem alike. And the last one was incorrect because it says you could use any words or phrases, but a simile needs to use comparison words like as or like. Okay, so a simile is a figure of speech that directly compares two different things. The simile is usually in a phrase that begins with the words as or like. Today's learning objective, I will be able to understand the purpose and meaning of metaphors in a literary text, incorporate metaphors in my own writing, share my ideas through collaborative conversation and in writing. Okay, all collaborative conversation means is pair sharing with your partner. So don't worry, it's nothing too complicated. First, let's start with a pair share discussion. Working with your partner, discuss the following question. How does non-literal language aid your understanding and enjoyment of a text? Pause here while you discuss with your neighbor. Now that you're done discussing, understand that the answers I will be giving are not the only answers, but just a list of common answers. So if your answers seem similar to at least one or two of my answers, you guys should be on the right track. So what is a possible answer? It helps paint a picture in your head. Using metaphors help paint pictures in your head of about what you're reading. It compares something you don't understand to something you do understand. So you might be reading about something that you're not familiar with, but if they use a metaphor and it compares it to something you are familiar with, you can better understand the new thing. It makes the story sound more interesting for the reader. People like to use metaphors to keep the reader interested so they don't get bored and end up putting down whatever they're reading. They want to keep them engaged and reading. And a final possible answer is it works like an attention getter. Like we talk about in your writing, you want to get an attention writer, a getter to get the uh, reader to engage in what you're reading. Metaphors draws the reader in and keeps them engaged, okay? So again, these are not the only four possible answers, but when you were discussing with your neighbors, some of these should have came up or something similar to them, okay?
So now we're going to look at examples from a previous text we read earlier in the year, The Village Blacksmith. In the original text, it wrote, The muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands. Okay? That was a simile, as we already discussed. How do you know it's a simile? Strong as. It uses words like like or as. It's comparing his arms to iron bands. Saying his arms are like iron bands. But if you wanted to rewrite that and turn that simile into a metaphor, you simply would say... The muscles of his brawny arms are iron bands. It is not a comparison. It's not saying his arms are like iron bands. It's saying they literally are iron bands. Okay? Creating a more visual, compelling um, picture in your head. You know, in real life, you know, they probably really are not iron bands. But trying to say that they literally are iron bands creates a more striking figure of speech. Okay. So kind of comparing again. We have a simile here on the left, busy as a bee. You know, we're not saying that student is a bee. We're saying that he's acting busy as a bee. And people know bees for being very busy getting all the honey, taking care of the queen. A bee is known as a busy animal, so if you're acting busy, people compare you to a bee. Now, in a metaphor saying, my nephew is a cuddly baby bear. <clears throat> Your nephew's not going to be a cuddly baby bear, okay? Your nephew's going to be a cuddly human baby. But... When we think of baby bears, we think of teddy bears, we think of something cuddly we want to, you know, hold on to. So this metaphor is saying that the nephew is is like is a, ba a baby bear. You're cuddling it like it is a baby bear. We know it's not a baby bear, but this figure of speech creates a more stronger, uh, striking image in your head than if you just use a simile, which is a comparison. And like I said, to remember the difference, if your figure of speech is comparing two things, okay, if you're saying um, Mr. Johnson is as fast as a cheetah, that is a comparison. You're comparing Mr. Johnson to a cheetah. Similes are comparisons. But metaphors are not. Metaphors, you're saying something is. It's like something. So you could say, uh, Mr. Smith is a strong gorilla, okay? You're saying Mr. Smith is a big, strong gorilla, you know, giving an image in your head of, like, a big, strong animal. You know, obviously, Mr. Smith is not a gorilla, but the metaphor makes you think he is in your head. So to review... Um, metaphors are a statement. It's saying something is something. It is, he is a shining star. Kisses are flowers of affection. Her long hair was flowing a golden river. You know, we know they were not, but we say that they are to create a visual striking image. Simile is a comparison. Busy as a bee. <clears throat> brave as a lion, light as a feather, okay? So when you're using imagery that does not compare, that's when we're using metaphors, okay? Now to practice, we're going to look at a picture here that has some illustrated metaphors. These are some common metaphors. You might not know all of them, but if you look at this picture you probably see some metaphors that people have probably used around school or at home. So right now, I want you to pause. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with your neighbor, try to identify 
as many of the metaphors you could see in this picture. Okay, if you're ready, we're already on pause, so let's see how many did you get. Okay, he is a night owl. Okay, that's something you use to talk about somebody who stays up late at night, gets more work done in the nighttime than in the morning. Okay, you could say Mr. Bersalos is a night owl. <laughs> um, then we have this blue book here. He's a walking dictionary. That talks about somebody who has a large vocabulary, who knows a lot of words, and knows what a lot of words mean. They're obviously not a walking dictionary, but they know a lot of words like a dictionary does. Then we have over here, homework is a breeze. That is to say that your homework is easy, not that it is blowing around in the wind. Then we have over here, this cake is out of this world. You know, that's what you say when the cake tastes really good. It's not from outer space, but it just tastes really good. That's what that metaphor means. Then you have the apple of my eye. When you call someone the apple of the, your eye, that's somebody who you care about a lot. Time is money, if you notice on the clock. Instead of numbers, it's dollar signs, okay? People say, you know, if you're wasting time, you're wasting money. Time is money. Um, she is a star. When you like someone, you think someone's great, you call them a star. All the world's a stage. This comes from a Shakespeare quote that says, the whole world's a stage and we are all but players, that we're all just a bunch of actors in a stage. So that's that metaphor. And we have this poor little girl with a broken heart. You know, her heart's not broken. If it was truly broken, uh, she would be in some severe medical problems. But what it really happens is that someone hurt her feelings. He's boiling mad. Okay. You could think of that little angry character from Inside Out. You know, when someone gets, gets at, mad, they get hot. We have the class clown. Someone who thinks they're really funny in class, you know, maybe it might be one of you or you guys in here who thinks, you know, let's always joke and interrupt class. Um, then there's your toast. Your toast means you're in trouble. You know, maybe one of your siblings tattled on you and mommy and dad's going to get home. Your toast, you know, they're going to light you over the fire like a piece of toast and you're going to get in trouble. Then over here, your voice is music to my ears. You'd like to hear someone's voice. This classroom is a zoo. I think a lot of teachers can agree with that a lot of times. Their students aren't students, but they act like wild animals. And the last one, he's a couch potato. With summer coming up, I think that's what a lot of us might end up doing. Just sitting on the couch, watching TV, playing video games, and such. So that is it for our lesson. Now that you're done listening to this lecture, I want you to open up the assignment 